Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a closer look at two of my favorite semiconductor companies, AMD and NVIDIA. Yep, you guessed it. But don't worry, we are going to take a closer look at one of your favorite semiconductor companies. I know how much it is Intel. More importantly, what I want to do is take a closer look at what NVIDIA investors can learn from AMD and Intel earnings. So let's get started. I do want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash Jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Right off the bat, we can see AMD reported an amazing quarter and investors are loving it. At this, as I am recording, the stock price is up over 11.5% today, sitting at $83.82. To be honest, I did not think we were going to see the market react this high on their earnings. I do think they were good, but I don't know if it's 11.5 percent gain the only thing that this kind of tells me is maybe the market was expecting a bigger pain for companies like amd because of intel's earnings remember we intel reported earnings about a week ago and we can see that dip the stock saw fortunately even today with uh, a lot of green stocks up intel is not kind of it, it's flying but not flying compared to the rest of the market intel is up roughly two percent now, if we take a closer look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is up roughly 6% as I am recording today's episode. First, what I want to do is I believe there are three to four things that investors can learn from both AMD and Intel. But I think it's more important to kind of do a backtrack to see what NVIDIA was kind of guiding for for quarter four of fiscal year of 2023, which they are expected to report in February, and I think we should be prepared. So first, right off the bat, they do expect revenue of somewhere between $6 billion. That is a very, very small quarter over quarter increase, and they say it is expected to be driven by three main markets. They expect a little bit of sequential growth in the automotive market. They also expect it in the gaming market, which to my, to my surprise, I thought this was going to be a negative, but they said earlier on in their last earnings that they expect the gaming market to see some form of sequential growth. They also see the data center market being another portion or another ability of them having that revenue sequential growth for quarter four. All right, so here we can see the overall revenue trend for NVIDIA. We can see quarter one of, the, of fiscal year 2023 for them was the peak. And from there, it has been dropping nonstop. If this quarter four is going to be that about $6 billion, we can see quarter three to some extent might have been the bottom for the revenue. But but there's some things that I might be kind of questioning. First, let's take a closer look at the data center market. So the data center market, if we take a closer look compared to a year ago, did grow a nice amount year over year. But sequentially, it did not grow much. It was up very, very low, low single digit growth compared to quarter two of fiscal year of 2023. Now, what did we learn from AMD and, and Intel in their data center market? If we take a closer look at Intel, we know two things. First, the data center market for them is down 33% for one total addressable market contraction. So they are seeing some of their bigger players maybe slowing down on spending and that is contracting the overall total addressable market at the moment. The second thing is they have very, very high competitive pressure. That competitive pressure is coming by none other than AMD. AMD kind of saw a little bit of the opposite. Hey, they saw a nice amount of revenue growth. Their revenue segment here was up 42% driven by the sales of their CVPUs and them continuing to grab market shares. They also mentioned that they are getting kind of strong record sales in some of their other data center products inside of server CPUs. They have a few accelerators thanks to that Silence acquisitions and the DPU thanks to that Pensando acquisition. So not only are they seeing growth in data center products, but they're also seeing growth in other forms of data center accelerators. Now, if we jump back into NVIDIA, I do believe NVIDIA unfortunately has a little bit of both right because they are the market shareholder in the data center market for gpus they might see a little bit of that total total addressable market contraction more heavily than amt right but but at the moment they don't really have too much competitive pressure in this space where i don't believe it means that they're going to lose market share they're going to lose revenue but what I'm, I'm expecting here in the data center market, I don't expect them to grow at the levels that AMD is growing in forms of percentage wise. 
but I don't expect them to drop either. I, I expect this quarter three, quarter four, this upcoming quarter four for data center to be a sequential small single digit increase. So that's where we expect in the data center market. They also have a lot of networking solutions. They also have a lot of kind of other accelerators like DPUs for the data center market. And I do believe that's going to drive that data center market to be up sequentially. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big, big jump. Next, I want to take a closer look at the client market. But before we take a closer look at the client segment, make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience. If you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, I have a semiconductor podcast channel. The link should be above or down below weekly episodes about the semiconductor market. So now in the client computing group, we see that for Intel, revenue was down 36% year over year. This is the consumer product. If we take a closer look at AMD, their client segment was also down a nice amount, down 51% year over year. And this is kind of causing an operating loss for them. I want to say for NVIDIA, if we take a closer look, they did mention that, hey, the gaming market would be up sequentially. I think if NVIDIA misses by somehow is going to be by the gaming market. But I do believe one thing that might help out NVIDIA is because they had the crypto mining cycle kind of decrease the overall demand a lot earlier than kind of the consumer space. It kind of moved this cycle a little bit earlier for kind of uh, their, their GPU products. So while AMD, for example, believes that quarter one might be the bottom for them in forms of inventory, it does seem like NVIDIA believes quarter three was the bottom for them because they had to kind of slow down a lot of that inventory correction a lot earlier because of that crypto mining issue and how kind of the graphics card market was kind of flooded with used graphics cards. This is the one that I believe is going to be the most cloudy. And like I do, men I mentioned earlier, if they do miss, I believe it's going to happen because of the gaming market. So we are going to take a closer look at Outlook in a bit. Now, the third thing is the automotive market, right? This is a very, very important segment for NVIDIA. If we take a closer look at Intel, we can see the mobile eye segment was up 59% year over year, driven by IQ demand and ramp up. Their IQ is pretty much their chip that goes for their autonomous driving solutions. If we take a closer look at the embedded segment for AMT, they do mention that the automotive market was pretty strong for them in this space as they continue to kind of have more system on chip platforms and their FP FPGAs continue to drive good customers to their platform. Now, remember, it, NVIDIA has their automotive segment. I do believe the one that's going to be growing the strongest in forms of percentage wise, obviously not value wise, because it's still super small, is going to be the automotive segment for NVIDIA. And that is one that I believe is going to start just continuing to increase dramatically for the next few quarters. So quick recap, Nvidia expects this upcoming quarter to be kind of flatlined, maybe small sequential increase compared to a quarter ago. Based on what we saw from AMD and Intel, I believe that is going to be this case. It's going to be very, very flatlined, if not a, a small sequential increase or decrease by slow single digits driven by data center, driven by automotive, the gaming market might be a bit cloudy for us to kind of understand until earnings come out. Now, I think we should kind of hypothesize what might happen for the outlook and what kind of outlook is NVIDIA going to give us for quarter one of fiscal year of 2024. And I do believe first we have to kind of take a closer look at the outlook that Intel and NVIDIA and AMD gave us. So Intel, unfortunately, their outlook looks horrendous 10.5 to 11.5 billion dollars this is horrible because remember this quarter they did about 14 billion dollars and the previous quarter was around 16 billion dollars i don't yeah about 15.3 billion dollars so we can see for intel the market continues to see a huge hit for them they are seeing a lot more weakness in the com in consumer space right now and they're also seeing that competitive pressure in the consumer in the data center market from the likes of AMD. So the outlook that Intel gives us is not good. What is the outlook look for AMD? AMD they also expect uh, a kind of a decrease of 10% year over year on their financial outlook for quarter 1 of 2023. They do expect that the consumer market is still weak. 
obviously to be expected, right? We are still seeing over inventory corrections happening and we are kind of seeing that slowdown at the moment. Unfortunately, AMD also mentions that they are seeing some softness in the clouding market at the moment. They expect this softness to be mainly in the first half of 2023 and expect that growth in the second half of 2022. So we can kind of see this kind of overall revenue trend for AMD, how it kind of is going to be most likely flatline for quarter three, quarter four, and this upcoming quarter one of 2023. I believe that is going to be the same kind of outlook that Nvidia is going to give us. Quarter three and quarter four, which is the one that is expected to be reported, are going to be pretty much the same. And then for their quarter one outlook, they are going to tell us that, hey, we the market is still too uncertainty. The gaming market, if it does do some form of sequential growth, it won't be by much. The automotive market will see strong growth. But, but it's not a meaningful portion yet to really kind of determine the overall um, top line number. The data center market, if AMD to some extent might be seeing some slowdown in the clouding space, a NVIDIA might also experience that at least for the first half of 2023. At the end of the day, I want to say NVIDIA stock has been very, very volatile. I am worried that this stock is a little bit priced to perfection right now, especially in the past month. It's up over 44.5%. So I do want to say even if earnings are good, stock prices can drop. And that's kind of where I'm focusing in and it's where I'm going to kind of keep my mentality that, hey, these stock prices can continue to go down. At the end of the day, I'm a long term shareholder of NVIDIA. I have no intentions of selling um, because I do believe in the next few years, this is a definite winner in my portfolio. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day and see you next time.